Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate, and it's Halloween as I film this episode, so happy Halloween. And uh, I almost decided to dress up as Elizabeth Holmes, but I just didn't think that I could pull off the blonde wig. So instead, I am dressed up as a Game Boy Color and a classic Game Boy, right? So cool, right? I love it. Uh, uh, my favorite console, so I wanted to be it for Halloween. Okay, but enough of all that, let's get into this week's latest developer news. So first up, we are just days away from Microsoft Ignite taking place in Orlando, Florida from November 4th through the 8th. And you can expect tons of great developer and IT pro content as well as a bunch of news. But if you can't be with us in Florida, we will be streaming sessions online and all of the content from the show will also be available after um, Ignite ends. And I'm gonna be there along with uh, lots of your Channel 9 favorites. So if you see me in a session or at the booths or on stage, please be sure to say hello. And right after Microsoft Ignite, we are kicking off the first stop of Microsoft Ignite the Tour. And this year, Microsoft Ignite the Tour will be in 30 cities around the globe, delivering great developer content to uh, developers and IT professionals. And so I'm going to be at the first stop, which is in Paris. So please say bonjour if you see me there. And you can get all the details on Microsoft Ignite and Microsoft Ignite the Tour in the links uh, in the links in the show notes in the description down below. Now, speaking of Ignite, the Edge team will be at Microsoft Ignite, and they've actually posted a list of breakout and theater sessions that, that their team will be hosting or participating in. So if you want to get more details on the latest news coming from the Microsoft Edge browser team, uh, be sure to check out that post. And I've got a link to it uh, in uh, the show notes in the description down below as well. Coming up next, TensorFlow 2.0 was recently released, and we discussed that a couple of weeks back. And uh, the machine learning team at Azure has posted a new blog post on how you can use TensorFlow 2.0 in Azure to fine tune a BERT or BERT model for automatically tagging questions. So that's really great. And TensorFlow 2.0 is actually integrated with the Azure machine learning services uh, to make TensorFlow workloads in Azure as seamless as possible. So check out the links in the description down below uh, for a look at that blog post post and demos on, on what you can do with this. In some command line news, the latest release of the Windows Terminal was released last week, and it is awesome. And so uh, some of the big things is that the UI received an update, um, and so tabs now look a lot better. And there are also now dynamic profiles that will detect what WSL or PowerShell core installs you have on your machine. And there are a bunch of bug fixes too. And uh, if you're not familiar, the new Windows terminal is still in preview, but it is getting better all the time. And so I've got a link in the show notes in the description um, to the blog post announcing the new uh, release, the download in the Microsoft Store, and the GitHub repo. And also, I'd want to note that uh, uh, I will be doing a live uh, session on stage at Microsoft Ignite Live with Brian Benz focused on how you can trick out the Windows terminal to fit your workflow, your workflow and aesthetic needs. So be sure to uh, come see us or uh, check out the video once it goes live um, on, uh, on YouTube. In some WSL2 news, Craig Lowen on the team just posted a new video of a new feature in WSL2 in the latest Windows Insider preview build 19013, memory reclamation. And so in the past, if a WSL2 VM needed more memory, it would grow, but it wouldn't get released back to the host when you were done. And that can be kind of annoying, especially if you manage to use lots of memory in your WSL install. But uh, now when memory in Linux is no longer needed, it can be reported back to the host and freed up, which will shrink the size of of your WSL2 VM. And so uh, Craig has more details in his blog post and uh, video post, and I've linked to both of those in the show notes down below. Speaking of WSL2, last week my pal Burke Holland posted a really great tip on how you can share SSH keys between Windows and WSL2. And this is something that I've struggled with as well, and so I was really excited to see Burke's solution, which I've linked to in the show notes in the description down below. In some Power Toys, toy, some Power Toys news, Power Toys 0.12 was just released to GitHub, taking in great feedback from the community. And so, if you're not familiar, Power Toys is a new open source rebirth of the old Windows 95 era Power Toys project, and it adds lots of little utilities or toys for power users, and it's it's really terrific. And uh, some new highlights in the new version include a new Power Rename utility, which lets you do batch renaming of files. Love it. And there are also some improvements to the fancy zone Windows Manager. And so I've got links to the Power Toys blog and the GitHub repo down below. In some Java news, Microsoft has formally signed the Oracle Contributor Agreement and are ready and excited to contribute to OpenJDK. And so for anybody who's been following Java since 
the beginning, uh, this is what we might say is kind of a historic moment. And it, it's great. So congratulations to the Java engineers, and let's see what we can give back to OpenJDK. On Channel 9 this week, we had lots of great content. First up, on the Cloud Native show, Shane talks about the Azure app configuration. And then over on Visual Studio Toolbox, we've got a new Visual Studio for Mac guide for improving productivity for .NET Core developers. And finally, on Data Exposed, Mark Rasinovich talks about Azure uh, SWL Database Edge, Hyperscale, and beyond. And I always love listening to Mark Talk Tech. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So this is where I admit that uh, I'm actually a pretty bad driver. Like, I don't even have a driver's license. Uh, I mean, I used to live in New York City, so who needs to drive? Also, it's better for everyone if I don't. But I've always blamed part of this on the anxiety that I got during my driver's test when I was like 16 or 17. And so I had to chuckle when I saw this new app developed by Microsoft Research in India that will administer a driving test without an instructor having to be present. Uh, it's really cool, and I'll link to the Microsoft Research site, uh, the video uh, that shows this off, as well as uh, Gizmodo's beautiful GIF-laden write-up. How do you feel about driving tech, uh, self-driving or, or otherwise? Let me know in the comments, and uh, feel free to also uh, comment on any of the other stories on this week's show. If you like this episode, please give it a like on YouTube. It really helps us out. And go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all your nerd news needs. Happy Halloween, everyone. See you at Ignite. I'm off to play some Game Boy.